Hey guys, PDF from Fixed Tools. So you want to buy a cheap plasma cutter? Are they any good? Should you buy one? Shouldn't you buy one? Have you heard the horror stories? Check out my video guys and I'll uh, let you know what I think. And always remember, subscribe to my channel and uh, catch up on all the other stuff we're doing. Hey guys, so we're talking about cheap plasma cutters. It depends what you call cheap. One man's cheap is another man's expensive. And it also depends what you want to do with the thing. Um, I mean, mine here, I think mine cost me $220 or $250 or something like that. And I've had it three or four years. Uh, I might even do a review on this one and uh, I'll let you know how it's been going. But um, yeah, one man's cheap is another man's expensive. And it also depends what you want to do with the thing. If you want to use the thing commercially and you're a commercial plasma cutter guy, you don't want to be buying one of these, these cheap, so called cheap machines. But uh, as long as you compare apples with apples, um, yeah, I don't think you can go far wrong with them. When I bought my first machine, um, that's a long time ago because I'm pretty old now, um, you know, I paid about fourteen or $1,500 for a machine equivalent to this. It was about five times the size and it could only cut half as much as this could. And it was like six, seven times the price. Um, but that was just technology back then. It just didn't work. You know, we were doing everything with transformers, and, and it's all um, it's all done in a different way these days. It, it's all done with, with Mossit or Moffat, Mossit, I think it's called. Um, yeah, Mossit technology, um, and it's uh, it's all uh, it's all pretty well computerized stuff, really. Um, so they can mass produce it and they can make a better quality product for a lot lot cheaper and then China's got it on the deal as well and um, they, you know what it's like with China I mean when China first started they used to make crap stuff I used to buy Chinese tools and you'd use them once and throw them away I don't know if you had the same experience with what I have but over the years I mean, people won't put up with that anymore and it's got to have a certain it's got to be a certain quality for it to, to even sell in the shops I mean there's still a bit of junk around but I mean if you do a little bit of research um, I think you get some really, really good deals. But it, uh, like I say, it depends on what you want to buy. I mean, you guys in the USA and Canada, if you want to buy something made in, made in the USA, well, that's all good, very well good luck to you, but you're going to pay a premium for it. And, you know, uh, I, I'm in New Zealand here. I prefer to buy New Zealand made, but they don't make anything here. So uh, I can buy made in the USA or made in Germany, but, I, but you've got to be prepared to pay four or five, six or seven times the price of what something is made in China. I mean, it's all very well to knock the hell out of it, but, but at the end of the day, I don't know about you guys, but I'm just a little fella working in my workshop, and I don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a plasma cutter that I might use four hours a week. It just seems crazy to me. Um, you've got to compare a machine with a machine. If you're buying a machine like this, and you expect it to have a performance of a, a USA-made machine that's worth $2,500, I mean, chances are you're going to be disappointed in, the, in this little machine. But if you want to buy a machine like this, or something like this, because there's lots of them on the market now, and uh, you want to cut four or five hours a week and just muck around in your workshop and you have a good time with it, and it makes things easier when you're welding them together and all the rest of it, well then you go for the, go for the, the cheaper one. Um, yeah, the, the, the brand names are, are pretty well irrelevant to me. And what I find too is that a lot of the Chinese stuff, or what I've learned, well my mates have got a few of these different different sorts of um, plasma cutters, but they're all the same. I think they're all almost made in the same factory. They've just got a different stamp on the front of them with a different brand name, basically. Um, yeah, the world's a small place now, guys, and uh, you just take advantage of, of what you can. You know, if you're spending 220 bucks on a plasma cutter, well, you expect the results from, from a $220 plasma cutter. You know what I mean? As long as it can cut three quarters of an inch plate, and you have four or five hours a week, and it turns on when you want to turn it on, and it goes off when you want to switch it off, and it cuts when you want to cut. What more do you want? I don't, I don't see the, see the problem. Maybe I look at it from a different sort of angle than you fellows, but um, yeah, I like value for money. And uh, and, and if you're buying from the likes of Amazon or eBay or or anything like that, it is, it is, most of these places have got a month's warranty anyway. You send the thing back, so you get it for a month, and and you you beat the hell out of it for a month and see if it's going to work and do what it wants for you. Chances are, if it's going after a month, it's going to keep going after 12 months. But if it's not going after a month, send the bloody thing back and get a refund. It's win-win. I don't, don't see the point, really. And then you just buy another one, a brand name one that you think might be a bit better. Read some reviews and, and see how you go from there. But anyway, that's just my rant for the day. Oh, I'm smell I'll get here and I'm just rant grave and you know how it is. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, that's my thoughts, guys. That's my thoughts on uh, on the plasma cutters. I've done a bit of research on, on a couple. Um, if I was to buy it again, like I say, there's no point in me changing this one because this is a really good machine. I've had it for 
and oh, I don't know, two or three years, maybe even more than that. Time flies when you get to my age, you know how it is. I probably had it six or seven years, but you know, brain starts to go a little bit in the end. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't buy a cut 40 because mine in here is a my hair is a cut 40. I'd buy a cut 50 or something because there's a few of them on Amazon that I that I've had to look at, but I just can't see the point of replacing it when I've got one that works perfectly fine. Um, but there, there's two, and uh, mine is a, a HF start, and I'll buy a Pilot Arc start. You know, the one with the uh, with the when you push the button, that the flame comes out of the torch. It's just a lot easier cutting when you're cutting rusty steel and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, there's a couple of my favourite ones that I'd buy. Anyway, if you're interested, I'll chuck a couple of links down below and you can have a look at them, see what you think. But I mean, you're not paying any more than, well, I think the cheapest was about bloody 225 bucks or $250 or something. It's ridiculous. If you have the thing for 10 years, wow, that's, that's, pre that's pretty good value to me. You know, 10 years for 250 bucks, that's about 25 bucks a year. I mean, what the hell do you buy for $25 a year? Two coffees. I mean, that's it. So like I say, guys, I would just compare apples with apples, you know. Compare your machines with your machines. If you're going to compare a $250 machine with a with a Canadian made or a German made or a USA made machine, then um, you're going to be paying a hell of a lot more for, for, for the uh, locally made machine. And it may be a hell of a lot better quality too, but the chances are that it'll the both of them will cut steel and both of them will basically do what you want to do unless you're going to get all weird and fancy about it and you need it to make a living or something like that. But if you're just an uh, average Joe Blow like me working out in the back shed, um, I don't really care what brand name's on my thing. Uh, like I say, maybe I'm a bit odd. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the old uh, rant, the video, the rant video for the day. And remember, if you like my rants and you like my videos, subscribe to the channel, drop me a note, tell me what you think. You might have had a totally different experience with the Chinese stuff. But like I say, when it first started, bringing it into New Zealand here, this is going back 10 or so years, it was total crap. But now it's it's really starting to get on the ball. And I would say in another 10 years, you're going to watch out for them because it's going to be as good as anything else on the market, but about a quarter of the price. Anyway, like I say, that's my rant for the day, guys. Have a great day, and we'll catch you next time.